Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, today we will be discussing some of the factors which affect wound healing as well as some of the common complications that we are likely to see during the process of wound healing. So, if what you should know is you should know some of the important factors which are going to affect the healing of wounds and along with that you must be able to recognize some of the complications which arise as a result of improper wound healing. So, first let us look at the factors. Now, the factors that affect the process of wound healing can either be certain local factors or they can be systemic factors. So, first let us look at the local factors. So, what are some of the localized or in the region of injury factors? that prevent the healing. So, a uh, high in this list is infections. So, that is why it is so important to maintain the sterility of wounds as the presence of any infective organism will cause extreme delay in healing of wounds. The second important factor to keep in mind are some of these mechanical factors. Let us say a person has a wound which is over a uh, joint where there is a lot of movement. Now, this movement in that joint will prevent the healing of the injury which is present over the joint. So, these are some of the mechanical factors that one must take into account while looking at the time period a patient requires for healing their wounds. So, keeping this in mind, we may uh, need to immobilize the joint or uh, give proper advice to the patient as uh, so as to keep the joint little more immobile till the wounds heal. Now, the size, the location and the type of the wound also plays a very important part in the healing process. So, as we have learnt earlier that during wound healing a granulation tissue forms and the amount of granulation tissue is much more whenever there is a large wound and it heals by secondary intention. A larger wound heals by secondary intention and so it would take a little longer time than wounds which heal by primary intention. Also certain wounds uh, which are located on the face heal faster and much better than wounds that are located at the extremities because face has a greater amount of vascularity which enables the healing process to move faster. Now, apart from this, the presence of a foreign body within the injury uh, or a large wound can prevent or delay the healing process. For example, let us say a person was involved in a road traffic accident and the person has a huge wound, has multiple fractures and which gets infected by mud, soil, glass pieces. Now, in spite of ensuring the best cleansing or cleaning cleanliness in that area, some splinters of wood, tiny glass particles may still remain and such things would impede or prevent the healing of wounds. So, these are some of the local factors which can prevent or delay the healing of wounds. Now, let us look at some of the systemic factors, some diseases that the patient has which can prevent wound healing. Now, primary importance is the nutrition of the person. A good amount of protein is required for proper healing process to occur and along with that the presence of vitamin C also improves the healing process. Now, vitamin C as we all know is very important in the formation of collagen 
and collagen formation is an important part of granulation tissue which helps to repair the injuries. So, hence nutrition which includes a good protein diet, good amount of vitamin C helps in wound healing. Now, certain diseases like metabolic status of the patient and high among this list is diabetes and we all know that in diabetics the wounds heals much slower than in other patients. Now, why is it so? So, diabetic patients can have some amount of microangiopathy, some vascular diseases and also the high sugar levels may impede the functioning of the neutrophils is another reason that has been proposed in these patients. Also the circulatory status of the patient must be kept in mind. Now, the patient is suffering from certain vascular diseases which prevents good blood flow to the area. For example, if there is atherosclerosis in the vessels, such diseases will also result in slow healing of injuries in these patients. Now, we must also keep in mind that certain hormones like glucocorticoids if present in excess can delay the healing of wounds because it prevents the inflammatory process and again we know that inflammation is a very important component of formation of granulation tissue. So, it is the inflammation which brings in the inflammatory cells which in turn brings in the growth factors, it brings in the cytokines which helps in formation of granulation tissue. Hence, we must keep in mind that a good nutritional status is very important for healing. We must also know that diabetics will have delay in their wound healing. Uh, as so, along with that if the patient also has vascular disease then it adds on to the delay of wound healing. So, these are some of the local and systemic factors which we must keep in mind to ensure that wound healing occurs at the proper rate. Now, in spite of the best attempts, sometimes there is complications in wound healings. One must have the ability to recognize these at the earliest. So, these uh, fall into three important categories. The first category is when there is a deficient granulation tissue or a deficient scar tissue formation. The second category of complications arise when there is excessive formation of the repair components. When I say repair components, what do I mean? I mean the components which take part in the formation of granulation tissue. And the third one is when the patients develop contractures. So, now let us look at each of these in a little greater detail. So, what happens when there is deficient granulation tissue or deficient scar tissue formation. So, if a patient does not have adequate formation of granulation tissue or scar formation, what it can result is known as wound dehiscence or ulceration. Dehiscence as the word means the wound breaks, it breaks down. So, why should it break down? That is something very commonly seen uh, in post abdominal surgeries, if there is some reason for increase in the abdominal pressure and when does that happen? If the patient has episodes of vomiting post surgery or if let us say the patient is coughing and which secondarily increases the intra abdominal pressure and hence you would have noticed in the post operative place. The surgeons ensuring that the patient has no episodes of uh, vomiting and they explain to the patient that they should not cough excessively and this is to prevent wound dehiscence. Now, why does ulceration occur? Ulceration usually occurs when there is inadequate vascularization that is there is not enough vascularity for the wounds to heal. The second reason where ulceration can occur is when the patient is having certain neural problems as you can see in leprosy patients, as you can see in patients who have spinal cord injury and we call these ulcers as neuropathic injuries where there is decreased sensation 
and the patient does not realize when there is repeated injury. So, in both these conditions we can see ulcers and these ulcers will not heal very fast. So, we must keep these points in mind. Now, let us see what happens if there is excessive formation of the repair components right. Till now we were talking of decreased formation. So, now let us see if there is excessive formation of the wound repair components that is if there is excessive formation of granulation tissue what can happen. The first complication that we can see is what is known as a hypertrophic scar and this is because of excessive collagen formation which gives rise to a raised scar. Now, such kind of hypertrophic scars are very commonly seen in patients uh, post burns or thermal injury where the injury is quite deep and it goes quite deep into the deeper dermis and the excess of collagen tissue formation results in a scar which rises higher than the surrounding tissues. Now, similar to a hypertrophic scar, but much more aggressive is a keloid. A keloid is, where, is when the scar grows much, much beyond the boundaries of the original wound and it looks very nodular, very, very nodular. And unlike the hypertrophic scar, where we cannot predict who will develop this, keloids are usually uh, having a genetic predisposition. So, usually if you ask the patients, they will say that the previous scar also ended up in developing a keloid and such patients are more likely to develop keloids again in their life as a result of any other injury or even a surgically in induced uh, wound which has been sutured can give rise to keloids. So, unlike a hypertrophic scar which is not genetically predisposed to keloids are usually having a genetic predisposition in patients. The third type of aberration that we can see is an um, exuberant granulation tissue formation. Now, this granulati granulation tissue increases so much that it prevents the formation of the epithelial layer. So, it prevents formation of epithelial layer and hence healing will be incomplete and it is given a very interesting name which is known as a proud fresh. Uh, this proud flesh or exuberant granulation tissue must be prevented and sometimes it, uh, it may be cauterized or surgically removed so as to allow the epithelization of these tissues. The fourth type of excessive tissue formation occurs in the form of a desmoid or an aggressive fibromatosis where there is excessive proliferation of fibroblasts and these kind of lesions tend to recur uh, even after removal. Uh, the other complication which can recur is a keloid. So, even if you remove a keloid, it will grow back as a keloid. So, having known this, let us look at a picture and decide whether it is a hypertrophic scar, whether it is a keloid, whether it is an exuberant granulation tissue or a desmoid. So, have a look at this, the picture A and if you look at it, what you are seeing is a tissue which is raised much more than the surrounding tissues. It looks quite aggressive, it is very, very nodular and the picture on the right, the B is showing a microscopy of the same where you are seeing dense thick eosinophilic bundles of collagen. So, you can compare it to the surrounding uh, collagen fibers which are looking lighter pink while the central zone is showing thick bands of irregularly placed dense collagen. So, which complication do you think this is? So, this is a typical picture of what is known as a keloid where the granulation tissue and grows so much, much beyond the normal confines of the skin looks very nodular and these are lesions with 
uh, which occur in patients who are genetically predisposed to developing them and they can develop every time we uh, uh, give them a surgical uh, cut or the patient gets injured otherwise. So, this is how a keloid looks like. Now, let us move on to the third complication which is known as contractures. Now, you would have all heard of wound contraction, right. So, wound contraction is a very important normal healing process. So, especially in healing by secondary intention when there is a large wound to reduce the gap of the wound the myofibroblasts come in and help in wound contraction. But sometimes this process becomes very, very aggressive. And when there is an aggressive proliferation of collagen fibers, it gives rise to contractures and deformities of the wound plus deformities of the surrounding uh, tissues. For example, you would have seen patients with very deep burn wounds. Yes, I am not talking of the superficial burn injuries, but very deep injuries. Patients who develop third degree burns, you will notice that they develop claw like fingers, they develop contractures or adhesions of the skin between different areas of the body and these are known as contractures because it is not possible to heal this extensive damage by the normal process. So, it ends up in a contracture. So, this is the third type of complication that we can expect in wound healing. So, to summarize what we did today, we discussed the factors which affect wound healing. We discussed about some of the local factors and some of these factors included the good nutrition of the patient, the movement which can occur in the joints near the point of injury. We uh, looked at the size of the wounds, we looked at the nature of these wounds which can result in uh, delays in healing. We also looked at a lot of systemic factors and uh, among the systemic factors we looked at uh, nutrition, we looked at a good protein diet which helps in healing, we looked at uh, uh, adequate vitamin C which is required for healing. Also we looked at patients who have peripheral vascular disease, patients who have diabetics which prevents the healing processes. We looked at certain common complications which can arise like uh, hypertrophic scar. We saw a picture of a keloid, a very aggressive form of nodular uh, tissue deformity which develops in genetically predisposed individuals. We looked at exuberant granulation tissue and we also looked at desmoids or fibromatosis. Thank you.